Julie. I work at the Mamie George Branch Library in Stafford, and today I will be showing you the art of book folding. You only need a few supplies. A template, which will be provided in a PDF form in the description box below, a book, a pen, and a ruler. Today I will be showing you how to make tulips. When you get your book, you first have to calculate how many pages your book has and how many of these pages you're actually going to need. In order to do so, you count the amount of numbered pages and then add that to the total of unnumbered pages. So for instance, I find page one, this is page one, I go to the end of the book, and I count how, or however many numbered pages there are. In this case, there are 382. So there are 382 pages that are numbered. Now I'm going to count the number of the uh, amount of unnumbered pages. So that will be two, four. Six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, eighteen, eighteen unnumbered pages. Add that to the 382 and you get 400. So this book has 400 sheets to fold. However, my design only needs 360 pages. So what I will do is the difference, which is 40 pages, uh, is you're actually going to factor them in to the front and the back of the book so that you're able to have the, your design in the middle of the book. So I have 40 pages that I will not be using in total. I will count 20 pages in the front and I will count 20 pages in the back. Once I've done that, I will know when to start folding. So I found my first page. Now I'm going to tuck the design behind the very first page, making sure I'm lining it up here. And at the edge of your book, you will be lining it up with the first line that we'll be folding. So you want a ruler or some type of bookmark or something consistent um, that you're going to carry with you throughout the whole page. And this will ensure that your line your crease that we're about to fold, that we're about to make, will always line up right up against your ruler and it will stay consistent. So tugging the bottom corner of the book, you are going to fold and try to reflect how the tulip falls on the line, the very first line that we're working on. And you're basically going to kind of use all your fingers to kind of manipulate the fold before making the crease because you're satisfied with the way that um, your fold reflects the tulip. So I crease it right there and actually as you can see it doesn't run up here so I'm going to try to fix it here just a little bit. Okay. So the way I made this crease was I wanted to make sure that this crease actually makes it to where the bottom part of your design falls on the line. And this, of course, is for this crease will always meet up against the, you know, the, bin, the middle of the book. So I'm going to do the very same with the top of the book. I'm going to do it with the top corner of the book now. And you'll see what I mean by reflecting how the design falls on the page. I actually did that a lot better than the first one. <laughs> so as you can see, this crease reflected how the flower fell on the very first line. Your first sheet was for your first line. So I'm done with this. I reflected the tulip as it fell on the first line of the paper. I'm going to flip the page over you have a pen, you want to make sure that you are marking your way through because it's very easy 
to repeat a line if you don't mark your progress as you go. So now I'm going to tuck this behind the second sheet. So we're onto the second line. We marked off the first one, we're on, now onto the second one. I've lined up my, my paper against the second line and it's right along the edge here, it matches. So now I'm gonna do the same. I'm going to fold, oh, I forgot my ruler. You're going to fold up and reflect the line as precisely as you can. I'm gonna do that fold there and that kind of dip went more smoothly than the first one. And this you'll find as you go, it'll make, it'll be easier as you go to fold and to kind of eyeball and be more precise. I'm going to manipulate and until I'm satisfied with the way that the crease falls. I'm satisfied with that, I'll go ahead and crease it. As you can see with my second line, this is how the second line, this is how the tulip fell on the second line. This is my second page, work on my second line. I'm satisfied with the way that it encapsulated. As you can see, it, that's how it basically surrounds. Um, whenever you see the end product, this is actually what you'll be able to see. This will actually make, create the tulip. It's not these inside pages or corners that'll make the design. You're really looking at the outside of it. So I know it doesn't look like a tulip now, but trust that it will. I'm going to move on to the third page. You will continue folding in this manner until you get to this part where there are two different parts of the design that fall on the very same line and I'll show you what you're going to do when you get to that point. So I got to the point in the design where there are two different points where the design itself meets on the line. What you're going to do in this case is you are going to fold as we've been folding one section of the design and then on the next line and the next sheet you're going to alternate and do the other portion of the design that you did not do. So what that means is you will be ignoring one section each time you fold on the line. So the way that I'm going to show you what that looks like. You're going to fold like we've been doing. I'm going to do the bottom one first and you are folding to portray the bottom portion as I'm, as I'm doing now. I like the way that looks. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next one. Oops. And folding, folding, finding a good place to crease. So I'm done with this line. I'm going to cross it off on both sections and making sure I'm just going to cross it off over here too just so that I know. Moving on to the next page. I'm done with that line. I'm going to move over to the next line and as you can see I only folded the bottom portion. I ignored this altogether. But what will happen is I will go to the next line after the one that I crossed off So my next action will be to fold the top. And I'm folding this up, just like we've been doing. Kind of finding that spot where the tulip actually, where it is reflected on the line. And folding this down. And a little bit more. I'm satisfied with that. Okay. Remember to cross off as you go. And I'm crossing this off so that whenever I come back to the next line, I'm not doing the very same line. So I turn the page over and you see that I've alternated. I'm gonna do the same. So I did the top, now I'm gonna do the bottom. Tuck this over. If I were to label this as part A and part B, 
you're either folding part A and ignoring part B, or you are folding part B and ignoring part A. And this will make this effect where you will have, it'll be alternating. Part B was folded, then part A, then part B. And again, you're only folding one section at a time. For instance, on line 10, I folded part A and ignored part B. On line 11, I will fold part B and ignore part A. So you'll be alternating just like this until you get to until you get to a point where you are just folding one section of the book again, of the design again. So you'll be alternating until you get to a point where you only see one part of the design left and you're just folding this until you get, of course, to the next part where you're alternating. So that's how you alternate and I'll show you what the first tulip looks like to show you that it does, in fact, come out, the design comes out even though you're alternating and ignoring um, a portion of the fold. So I finished the first tulip and this is how it came out. As you can see, the tulip shows very clearly, even though I was alternating and essentially ignoring a portion or a part of the design in each line. But as you can see, alternating works and you can still see the tulip. So you're gonna continue doing that for the remainder of your design and I will show you the end product when we're done.